starting an art journal. Lately I've been finding that I'm very inspired by creators such as Kaylee Gray and I have really been drawn to the messier, collage-filled, vintage paint-covered, messy journals that I'm seeing out there. And I tend to try and be a little bit neater and to plan things ahead of time. And honestly, I wanted a journal where I could try and get out of that box and be a little bit more fun with things. And so today I am gonna do that. I also have been following along with Junk Journal July, which is something that Meg Journals has been hosting, and the very first prompt on that list is begin, so it seemed like a sign that I should do this. I picked up an MD notebook in the A5 size, and A5 is normally bigger than I like to go with journals, so this was also an attempt to try out that size. I got the paper cover for it, which you can see is on there right now, and I grabbed, at least for this spread, a bunch of packaging from different stationery and journal companies that I had saved because I thought it looked nice and it's just, just been sitting in a box and so today I'm going to use it to make a spread along with some of these clear stickers that I got from Stationery Pal. They sent me these and some washi tapes and some paint which uh, <laughs> I don't like journaling with things that have to dry, but we're gonna give it a try. We're gonna see how it turns out. Now, because the first pages in this notebook do that annoying thing where the binding is a little bit higher up than the rest of it, I am not gonna be doing the journaling on that page. What I decided to do instead was to keep track of all of the dates that I journal in this notebook using my date stamp, a little bit like the card in the front of a library book. I went in with a pen after just to fix the numbers that didn't fully stamp and then we can get started on the actual journal spread. I did put a little piece of paper here just in case the ink decided to transfer. So my first goal is to block out some of this just plain white paper and so I have this brown paper bag that I think came with maybe one of my Yoseka orders, something like that, and I'm just kind of ripping it up either just with my hands or with a ruler and kind of figuring out where I want to place that. And taking a recommendation from one of the journaling creators here on YouTube, I am putting aside a box where I can keep all of the paper scraps that I don't use here so that the next time I am doing a junk journaling <laughs> spread, I have lots of little pieces of paper that I can grab from, so there's no waste. I am attaching this using a glue tape runner. This is the Plus Norino Pod, and I got it from Stationery Pal. Uh, it was gifted to me. Um, it's probably not my favorite adhesive, but they had it on the list of things that they were willing to send to me, so I figured I'd try it out at the very least. And as you can see here, I only use tiny, tiny little bits. I don't cover the whole edge with it just tiny little dots here and there because I like for it to last as long as possible. Um, it is pretty expensive when I do pay for it myself, so gotta make it last. I do like that I don't have to wait for it to dry, and as you can see here, I'm trying something new, which is placing the paper just over the edge of the journal itself because I kind of am hoping that over time, if I do that a little bit here and there, that the notebook will look really cool when it's closed. That is kind of my first time doing this. I've seen a lot of other journalers do it and it tends to be something that goes against my design urges, I guess. Um, I wanted to try it. And so far so good, I have been trying to think about layers and what to put down first, and a lot of this process involved just taking all the different pieces and laying them out in different spots and seeing what they looked like together. And some of the decisions I made were more spontaneous and others I thought about for a while before I actually glued them down. One thing that I knew I wanted to use is this Chic Sparrow wrapping paper. Now I have a lot of this. I have never thrown away any of it from any of my Chic Sparrow orders over the years and I have quite a few of those <laughs> because I knew I would eventually want to use it in a journaling spread whether it was as a background or fussy cutting out these cute little illustrated tools. I just love it. I love the design. It reminds me of products that make me happy and so I thought 
I would take some little bits and tear them up and layer them on top of the brown paper. I even collaborated with Chic Sparrow recently to design some products with them, so this is extra poignant that I chose to use this now. I also pulled out one of these order sheets that come with Bomb Kuhen orders. I honestly didn't even unfold this for a long time, but I finally did, and they put it in like a, it's like a little origami shape. It's really cool, but I just noticed that there was a handwritten note on the inside, so uh, I cut that out thinking, oh, I should save this, and tore up some of these little bits. I I do have one around that I kept folded up just because it was so cute, but we're gonna use this one today. <laughs> I also saved this backing card from one of the Traveler's Company charms, the little brass pen that I bought a while ago. I believe I got that one from Yoseka, and I thought I like that it opens up, and so this little flap will be really cool. It'll be like a little interactive hidden part of the page. And I barely had to do anything. It just already <laughs> was the perfect shape for this. I would just have to attach it to the paper. The next thing that I felt like this spread needed was color. And so I took what has become one of my favorite washi tapes recently. This is from Stationery Pal. I did receive it for free, but they also sent me a coupon code and some affiliate links. So if you're interested in going and checking that out, I'm gonna put those in the video description below. I do get a small commission from those sales, which is very nice because I do not get paid very much to make these videos and they take a lot of time. But I do love the abstract shapes, the soft colors, and the little bits of gold foiling on this tape. It is so pretty and I'm finding that whenever I use it on my journal pages, I like those pages more than some of the others. I, I just really like looking at this particular design for whatever reason. So now that most of the background is filled in, I am bringing back in the pieces that I know I'm going to layer on the top layer. And so just kind of getting those into place allows me to see what I'm missing, what else I could put on here. I tend to be kind of a maximalist when it comes to journaling. I'm always looking for what's missing and what else I can add. This card came with a package that Soom Keen sent to me, and I know that I wanted to use it on something. Um, it's been just kind of sitting on my desk because the illustration is really pretty, but I thought that it would be a really cool little door that I could put in here. I could write on the back of it, and then I could have other things behind it. And I think the little note from Bomb Kuhen is gonna end up underneath that flap on the left side. Now this is actually the packaging from that washi tape that I mentioned earlier, and I thought I would use a little bit of it. It is in the same pattern as the washi tape, so it matches, and it's a cool shape. I don't know. As I start to see different color patterns and shapes emerging on a spread like this, I try to pull those elements throughout so that it's balanced. And setting it all up like this revealed to me that there is a perfect spot for more washi tape right in the middle of the pages right here. So it is a little bit annoying and more time consuming to have to peel off the backing tape on this particular washi, but I assume that that has something to do with the gold foil. It's the only washi tape that I have that does that. So if it makes it so that the tape looks nicer and doesn't get stuck to itself, I can deal. And then this card came from an order from Sojourner, who also makes really amazing journal covers. And so I am going to cut out this little stack of traveler's notebooks and put it in, I think, the bottom left corner of the spread. I really like this. I saved it, honestly. I saved a lot of this stuff. And so here we are making an entire art journal spread just featuring packaging from my favorite stationery items that I couldn't throw away. <laughs> If you also, somewhere in your house, are hoarding a box of old stationery packaging, I encourage you to make a journaling spread with it and share it using the hashtag journal sunshine because I would love to see all of the beautiful packaging that you have refused to throw away over the years. <laughs> I feel like the company's put in so much time and effort designing those things and having them made and packaging their items the way that they do, they deserve to be enjoyed, don't they? 
Now I took a bit of a risk and decided to bring in another design element and often <laughs> when I do this it's too much but uh, I thought that this black and white grid washi would be okay. I thought that it would be all right. We'll see how it turns out I guess. But there, there are my, my reasoning here is that there are lots of black and white elements like the chic sparrow paper and the sumkeen illustration. We've got craft elements, we've got black and white elements, and we have those colorful pastel and gold bits from the washi tape design. And so my thought was if I added a black and white washi that it would go with everything as opposed to making it too much. Now, for me, this is the part that I have a lot of fun with, which is once all of the thinking happens and I have fully decided and committed to where I'm placing things, I get to kind of go around and take all the pieces that aren't attached to the pages yet and attach them. And it's so fun to see it come together and really nice to not have to worry about accidentally bumping something out of the way. It's just nice and relaxing and makes me really happy. So just going to play a little bit of music for you while I do that. to clear floral stickers. I love what they add to existing journal spreads, especially because you can see through to whatever is underneath them. They work really well when you're layering like this. And this particular pack came from Stationery Pal as well. And now I'm going to show you how I attach a little window using a card like this. Um, this is something that I do a lot in my traveler's notebook. I like to save postcards, things like that. And so I've had some practice with this. And the way that I like to do it is I take a strip of washi tape, make sure the card is placed exactly where I want it, and then place the washi tape along the edge that I want to be attached to the page. I make sure that it doesn't hang off of the bottom edge of it, so if it does, I kind of trim it or rip it out of the way. Make sure there's a really good seal on there, and then I open up the card and I place another piece of washi tape on the other side of it. That way, once it's all pressed down and sealed in there, I can flip the card open and shut and it makes a little hinge there for me. And as the pages end up more and more filled up, I kind of figure out what I'm gonna do with the empty spaces that are left. And in most cases, that meant adding more clear stickers because I love them. I added in some stickers that had little craft supplies on them, some little binder clips and some envelopes. And now, because I knew I wanted to add some brush lettering, I opened up the flap here and took a photo of the empty space on my phone. 
That way I could use markup and my finger to kind of plan out ahead of time where I wanted the words to go. Because I didn't want to use pencil and I just kind of, this is the way that I decided to do that. And then I jumped right in there and started lettering. I wrote down just kind of an encouraging phrase that I needed to hear and I am using the Kiritake Zig Fudabiyori in black. And this is bigger than the Tombow Fudanasuke, which is kind of my go-to for smaller brush lettering. I've been wanting to do more practice with this lately. Most of the brush lettering that I do is digital and Procreate on my iPad, and so I've been wanting to work a bit more on physical media. <laughs> I wanted to get some practice with brush lettering and I've been wanting to add more styles to the library of kinds of brush lettering that I can do. And so this is my attempt at that. I'm not entirely happy with it, but because you can't erase it, I just kind of had to commit and hope that everything goes okay. Then I did some actual journaling on the back of that Sumkian card using the Pilot Metropolitan in gold, and the ink that I have in here is the Robert Oster Cherry Blossom. And this is a really good example of how when I'm showing you journaling on the channel, I, I'm not posting especially private things, but they're not necessarily intended for you to read. I got a comment once from somebody saying that the speeding it up made it too hard to read. And really, it's not, in, it's not really intended for you to read. It's just intended for you to see what it looks like and to gain inspiration from that. I'm sorry if that's what you're here for, to just read my journals. I guess this is an okay place to do that, but it's not really my intention. Just know that if you choose to do that here, um, it's sad. <laughs> I was sad this day. And a lot of why I sat down to journal in the first place is because I wanted to make myself feel better. Better. I wanted to do something that would make me smile. I wanted to vent some of those feelings so that I could let go of them a little bit and I didn't have to carry them around quite so much. And journaling is really good for that, I think. And now it's time for the part that I was the most nervous about, which was adding paint. Now, I love all types of crafting, but I prefer dry media in general. If I could make a really big mess, it's not usually my thing. <laughs> and these acrylic paints of just various brands have been sitting in a drawer in my studio for years, just almost entirely unused. I very occasionally will pull them out. So I thought, you know what? In this notebook, I'm going to, I'm only really doing one spread at a time, so I don't have to worry about needing to shut the notebook at the end of the project so my thought was I can just let these out I can I can do the paint as the last step and then I'll let it dry and then I can close the notebook like the next day and it'll be fine it won't like glue itself shut or any of the things that I was worried about and I'm just gonna have fun with this and so I thought that this yellow would be really nice I pulled it out of the washi tape so it would match a little bit and it's just such a bright sunshiny color and the whole point of this spread was to cheer me up so I am trying something new. <laughs> Let me know if you have any tips. If you use paint in your art journals or even in your sketchbooks. Is there anything that I'm missing? <laughs> One thing that I do want to work on is knowing when to stop because <laughs> I definitely went a little bit too far, but it's okay. I honestly, in the end, I was happy with how it turned out and the whole point of this is to get better at it and to enjoy the process, so... <laughs> I also got very impatient about waiting for paint to dry, so I just went right in with the light blue, even though I knew that it was going to mix a little bit with the yellow. But I also didn't want it to be super neat. I wanted it to look a little bit messy, and so I just kind of went in there with multiple colors, even though I knew that there was still some yellow on the brush. In general, I had a lot of fun with this, and I am not completely turned off to the idea of painting in my journals anymore. I... I'm looking forward to seeing how much better at this I become if I do it a little bit on every page at the very least, and maybe by the time I've finished the whole notebook and filled it all up, maybe I will be more comfortable with it and I, I don't know, it'll be interesting to see how my style evolves. 
And here is a close-up look at how the entire spread turned out. I am so glad that I did this. It's something I've been wanting to try for a while, so I appreciate you coming along on the ride with me. If you would like to see more videos in this style of journaling, definitely let me know in the comments. And if you like to art journal or collage journal or just journal in a messier, more exciting style like this, tell me about it in the comments. I want to hear what your favorite supplies to use are and maybe some of your favorite tips that you've learned along the way. Make sure you remember to subscribe if you're new here and I hope that you have a good day. See you next time!